Hi, hey, Jack. I'm so excited to see the Sandek native apps uh, op center demo. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. So we're going to look at um, the Sundeck Op Center, um, which is a native app that you can install on the Snowflake Marketplace. Um, and we're just going to start by looking at what you can see in terms of warehouse utilization. Cool. So if you see the screen now, you'll actually see that we're logged into the Op Center app. Um, to start with, just so you understand how apps work. So as I said, Op Center is a native app. It's in the Snowflake Marketplace. So you can just go into Snowflake, search for Sundeck, or search for Op Center. You'll see the app. And then you can just install it from here and get it into your Snowflake account. And what's great about that is, is that means that your data is always secure. So your data doesn't go into any other accounts. It's going to stay within your Snowflake account. Yeah. That's my Snowflake account. I can just install it, and then it's running. That's exactly right. And it's, and it's entirely free. Um, and so uh, what we've done is we've, we've logged in. And so when it first installs, it basically does a little bit of analysis against your underlying query history table, your warehouse events history, some of the other operational information that's inside your Snowflake account. And it produces a number of analyses for you. One of the ones that's probably most interesting for people who when they first start with, uh, with Op Center is what we call the warehouse heat map. Okay? And that's what we're showing on the screen right now. And so the warehouse heat map looks at your consumption over time of your warehouses. And it looks at how effectively you're using your warehouse capacity. right? So you may start a warehouse. You may run one query on the warehouse. And then it may stay up for a little while idle and then shut down again. Okay? Um, and so this looks at not only what is the amount of resources that are being taken up by the queries that are running during the time that the warehouse is up, but also the idle time. And so ideally, you would want to get as close to 100% utilization of your warehouse as possible. But different things can influence that. So for example, if you start a query, you run a query for one second, the warehouse then gets shut down 60 seconds later, well, you're going to have one out of 60 seconds worth of utilization at best. That query was really small and only used a little teeny fraction of the overall warehouse. You're probably even below that percentage. And so what we try to do is give people an understanding of what's going on with the warehouses um, and seeing what the utilization is. And so what you see here is basically a color coding from light purple to dark purple of how much we are consuming our capacity on the set of warehouses inside of this particular Snowflake account. And this is running based on the history. You don't need to have uh, OpCenter running in the past to collect all this data. This data is in a Snowflake already. It's your account history. And now you get a chart like this for the warehouses. That's exactly right. Yeah. So yeah. So we, the data goes back far before when Op Center even existed. So it goes back and looks over time. And what you can see here is what you often see with organizations is you'll see some places where you're getting up into the 80 to 90% utilization. So there are some days where you can see here we got 95% on this particular day. Um, but then you also see a lot of lighter periods. And in this particular warehouse, or the collection of warehouses in this account, um, you see a lot of light periods on the weekends. And this is a pretty common pattern that we see is basically um, people potentially build up their warehouses for weekday traffic, or the activity inside the organization for weekdays. Um, on the weekends, it's probably more divided than what you would probably like. And so if you only have one user who comes in and starts a warehouse, odds are they're not actually going to use the capacity of that warehouse during the times that they're running the queries. And when it's more sporadic, like on a weekend, where someone might only be pulling up a dashboard on a you know, rare occasion, um, you're more likely to see that overall utilization be lower. Uh, so that's the first thing that OpCenter will show you. The second thing is, is that Op Center gives you this concept of probes. Um, and probes allow you to monitor queries. And so this is all built inside of Snowflake, so it takes advantage of serverless tasks. And what it does is it allows you to define different kinds of conditions. It watches active queries that are running the system. And then based on whether those active queries match this condition, it decides something to do. And the two things it can do is it can either notify someone. So it can email either the writer of the query or, say, a manager who's managing the process or a platform team. Um, or it can actually directly cancel the query. So if you want to have a warehouse and say, hey, for if it's a query pattern where I'm doing you know, cross joins and it's taking more than three minutes, I want to just automatically cancel that query. And so that's all built into the way that Snowflake already works um, and takes advantage of all the things that are inside of Snowflake. Yeah. Uh, what kind of conditions can you write here? So these conditions are against the um, what's called the query history table function. Um, and so you can write arbitrary SQL against that. Um, so this is actually is, is technically a where clause. So it is no SQL that you're going to actually be writing inside of that box. And you can see it on live queries, especially if a query is taking too long, you can react. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so you might say, I'm going to set a limit at five minutes to email people. And at 10 minutes, I'm going to automatically cancel it. Right. right. So avoid having to have a, a, someone sitting there watching this stuff. And this is especially nice on the weekends and the evenings. Um, and so then the next thing is what we have are called labels. And so inside of Op Center, labels are very similar to if you're familiar with Gmail labels. It's the ability to categorize. But instead of categorizing email, we're categorizing queries. Okay. And so one of the common patterns is you've got groups of queries that you want to look at together. 
OK? So I might want to have queries like, and so we've got a couple of examples here. We've got queries that spilled, queries that had long compilation, queries that were using acceleration, queries that were free, queries that were over a dollar each time they executed. And so you can basically build these up. And all of these are based on SQL as well. So you can define arbitrary conditions for whatever kind of groupings that you want to have. So if you want to say, hey, it's involving these three tables, and we have actually functions inside of Snowflake that allow you to figure out what tables are in each query um, using SQL Glot. And so you can actually go and say, OK, let me figure out what's going on with these queries. And then I can group those together. And so that inside of, inside of the um, experience here then allows you to look at query history over time and query activity. We create a cost per query. Um, and then for that cost per query, we can then subdivide that for individual workloads. So you can say, hey, this workload cost me this much, that workload cost me that much. And so you can see over time whether or not different groups of people are influencing things. And so here we can actually see those different filters that were created, um, the labels that were created before. Um, and so for example, here I'm actually going to look at streamlit operations. Um, so we'll look at other streamlit queries on this particular system. And now we're actually coloring that by the users on this particular system. This is an internal development system we have. And we can see here that there's a Robert. Um, during the month of June, Robert was the single biggest driver of query costs. He drove almost $60 worth of query costs using streamlit operations. Is that 100? Uh... I oh, know it's not 100 percent. It's 120 uh, dollars. Dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so one of the things that's in here is is that because people potentially are not paying rate, you can go in and actually configure out what actually configure what your specific um, costs are to make sure that that's correct for your organization. Yes. And for to calculate the query cost, you have some algorithm to figure out like moving from the cost of the warehouse to how do we divide it per individual query? That's exactly right. And there's actually, it's a really interesting domain of, of thought itself. And so first, reminding you before, we put all of this code inside of GitHub as well. So you can go and look at the algorithm and agree or disagree with it. But what we do is we look at the overall utilization or consumption of um, each query against the warehouse. So queries, um, one of the things that Snowflake does report is, is the, the warehouse utilization associated with the query. So it might say, hey, 20% or 100%. And so we look at that. And then we, so we then associate or attribute um, cost of individual queries to different um, to different queries based on their overall consumption and time that they run on the warehouse. Um, and we actually came up with what we think are, is an important distinction. Um, we actually talk about two different costs. We talk about what we call loaded cost and unloaded cost. And so unloaded cost is looking at the query, assuming that there's no wastage. Right? So if you imagine you start a warehouse, you run a query for five seconds, and then you shut it down you know, five seconds later, right? theoretically, there's, a bunch, there's wastage there because the warehouse was running for five seconds where you weren't running a query. And so unloaded cost says, let's ignore the wastage and just look at this particular query. And in an, in, in an assumption that the, the system is used 100% efficiently, this is what I want to stand with the query. And that's really, really important if you're trying to, for example, track workloads over time. So you know, if, if my data size is growing 20% each month for this particular use case or dashboard, I want to look at you know, what's the growth of that cost over time, independent of if I have a different amount of wastage one day versus another. Right? But if you're actually trying to understand cost and actually figure out how to m minimize and max maximize efficiency of your Snowflake investment, then you'll look at what we call a loaded cost, which actually also allocates the wastage to the individual queries. Right? And so depending on the particular analysis, you really want to think about one of those numbers versus the other. Yeah, we can live in both worlds because if we go back to uh, uh, the warehouses chart, yep. if we manage to improve the utilization of warehouses during the weekends, not by making any change on, a, on our query patterns, but just how we scale our warehouses. Yep. Uh, then the cost per query will go down right. without making any change on my query or my query patterns. Yes, exactly. And so, and so in that situation, like it's not very helpful to look at that number when you're actually trying to figure out how to make a workload more efficient, right? Because it's kind of two different things. It's like workload optimization versus warehouse optimization, and you got to got to be focused on both of them. Nice. Yeah. So that's that's a quick overview of Ops Center. Do you want to jump into a quick overview of the the SaaS product that we have that connects to Ops Center to extend capabilities? Let's go to the other side. Once we have this running on our Snowflake account for free, open source, native app, no data goes out. I love it. Uh, how do we make this more powerful with the SaaS? Let me just jump in here, and I'm actually going to show a demo here to start um, in Hex. Um, so Hex is a, is a BI tool that sits on top of Snowflake. Is very you love Hex. Yeah, you love <laughs> Hex. Um, and uh, it's defined to work with Snowflake. Well, it's a perfect example of how Sundeck can fit into this ecosystem. So Hex knows nothing about Sundeck. Sundeck didn't exist when Hex was built. Um, and yet you can actually use Sundeck with Hex because Sundeck just acts like Snowflake, and you just connect 
defining your, your Snowflake connection string to connect to Sundeck um, uh, to do Snowflake stuff. And so I'm going to show you a really simple example here. I've got that, that simple case where the user is just running a query against the transactions table. Um, so the first case is, is that they're, they're, they're a user that's actually running a, a, a query that has a date clause. Okay? So I'll execute this query against Snowflake okay, via Sundeck. Um, and this query should come back in just a second here um, if everything goes well during a demo. Uh, let's see here. Uh, All right, there you go. Select star from the past. Yeah, select star from the past. So this is a really, this is a very simple example, right? But basically, I have a where clause. So the query in this situation, we say, hey, let's let the query through to Snowflake and run it inside of query, the, into, inside of Snowflake. Okay, I'm going to run a second query. This query, I didn't do the job of actually even thinking about a where clause. And as I said, this is a very, very trivial example. This is not a fancy example, but I'm going to run the same query against the same connection, running against Snowflake, and momentarily here. Yeah, da, da, da. it's exciting times. Always to wait, wait, watch. I'll get an error message back. Okay, so this is Sundeck helping out, and what it's telling the user is, "Hey, we want you to run this query with a filter against that table." Yes. Okay, so we're just trying to tell the user, "Hey, like, hey, let's let's be a little more cautious of how we're using these things." And this is obviously a very simple example. And the way that this works is is that we have something um, called a flow inside of Sundeck. So now we're in the fun, uh, the Sundeck UI. Um, and a flow basically defines a set of operations that apply to a query before and after it executes inside of Snowflake. Okay? And the very first thing we have here is what we call um, a, a reject hook. And this reject hook says reject qu queries against transactions that have no filter. Okay? And we use what we call queue-like, which is a way to match query strings syntax to, with the understanding of syntax. So it's not string-based. It actually understands how queries work. And we say, hey, any query that's querying against the public transactions table but does not have, so we say not SQL queue-like with a where clause, we're going to reject this. So it's basically a simple if then. So if this, then do that. In this case, we're saying if this is the, the pattern of the query, we're going to reject that query. I'm not going to let this query pass. That's exactly. I'm going to stop this query from coming through. So that's a very simple example. I'll show you a second example here, which is I'm going to have a situation where I have two queries. And so this is a situation where you may have different warehouses for different purposes, but you can't control necessarily how people are, are people accurately using the right warehouse for the right use case, right? So it might be I have an interactive warehouse that people can interact with and something that's more like a batch warehouse that people can interact with. And it may be the case that people are running their batch queries in the interactive warehouse, and you're like, well, that's, that's hurting over consumption. It makes the, the ETL queries go longer because the batch queries go longer because it's maybe the warehouse is sized for smaller interactive queries. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to run two queries against the flow, the Sundeck flow. Um, the first one is a two-table join. Um, and the second one is a three-table join. And again, this is a very simple example for demo purposes. Um, so in both cases here, the query comes back, right? There's no question like the query comes back. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, and I don't need to worry about it as a user, right? But we're going to actually hit the query history table that Snowflake provides us and look at where those queries ran. And so what you can see here is the two-way query ran against the demo warehouse, but the three-way query ran against the batch warehouse. And so this is Sundeck dynamically rerouting one of the queries to a different warehouse um, based on the properties of the query. In this case, how many tables are joined together. It could be the number of tables, or it could be the tables. If it, could be, yeah, it could be the number of tables. It could be the user and the role and a certain time of day. Like the, the ability, you can have uh, if it's arbitrary. Sunday and... Yeah, but if it's Sunday and this is a big query, let's run it on the main warehouse because the main warehouse isn't that busy on Sundays, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, and so that's, that's also defined here. So that's a second hook in the same flow. And we basically just say, reroute joins to the batch warehouse. And so here, we've got a couple of different conditions. We say, first, I'm targeting the demo warehouse. Well, and we want the demo warehouse to only be interactive queries. So let's, let's, let's focus on those queries. The second one is, this is not the superstar analyst. Right? Like maybe the super analyst gets, knows what they want to do. Let's leave them alone. Right? And then the third one is actually using this queue like again to look at the query pattern. And it's saying any select query against three tables. And you'll note here that this is actually a um, old style where join, right? Like we're not actually using an ANSI style join here. Um, and as a user, I actually wrote an ANSI style join, right? So I said join on, right? Um, and so this is a, an example of how that's actually an intelligent pattern matching. So it actually understands that joins, whether they're expressed as where clause joins or ANSI joins, are both still joins. And so we can identify those either ways. So we're doing some actually some, some intelligent work behind the scenes for this. But anyway, you can basically set up these flows. And as I said, you have the pre-hooks, which actually can modify the queries, reject them, reroute them, re rewrite them, actually rewrite them, um, all inside the context of Sundeck before they send on to Snowflake. 
And then we have post hooks, which actually can look at what's going on after the fact. So after a query completes inside of Snowflake, are there certain tasks that we would like to take based on what was the nature of that query? Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, if you show here, I'll show you quickly the example of, of um, a rewrite. And this is a very simple one. You've worked with Snowflake a lot. You know that there are certain kinds of constructs inside of Snowflake that you can't execute as inside of a select clause. So for example, show shares. You can't use show function outputs inside of other select clauses without writing a bunch of Snow SQL script, scripting, right? I've been there. You've been there, right? And so we said, you know, wouldn't it be nice if Snowflake worked like Bash? You know, in Bash, you can actually use backticks to say, run this part of the operation first, and then take the value of the output of that and give it to something else. And we said, hey, wouldn't it be nice if Snowflake could do the same thing? Okay? And so that's exactly what we did with wow. Sundeck here. And so here you can see that we actually have show shares. We've put that in backticks, and then we're actually doing a select statement against that. Okay? And so if I execute this, you'll see that I'll get back some results. So I get back a table, right? So from a user's perspective, I've now given you an, a, bit, a much simpler way to interact with these values um, than what would otherwise be the case. And behind the scenes, Sundeck is rewriting this to take advantage of Snow scripting to get this done, right? But the user doesn't need to worry about any of that complexity. Select from show. Yeah, How select did from you show. Make this happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 the, so, so, yeah. It basically constructs up a bunch of um, operations in a Snowflake to get this to the place, and so it's fun with show. Mm -hmm. Um, we have another example here where you can actually union the results of two create table as is, so other kinds of operations which you can't take the output from. Um, but another really interesting way to use this is, is that sometimes, as much as you always want the data warehouse to be as smart as possible and it solves all your problems, sometimes you know that this part of the query should run before that part of the query, right? And so in those situations, you can just take a subquery and put backticks around that, and we will also execute that first and then use the results of that in the rest of the query. Um, so if you want to do your own hand optimization of making sure that the optimizer is working just right, you can also play with it that way. And this is just a fun example of all of the different kinds of things you can do at this intermediate layer. So the experience I've had is shown that large organizations, as they get more and more sophisticated with data, start to create, and I've seen several bespoke systems inside of large financial services companies that do something like this. But it's always big teams, it's very expensive and very hard to maintain. Um, and most organizations can't hire a big team to try to build something by, by hand for this. And so what we did is say, let's come up with a way to make this really simple for users to use um, so that they can, they can play with this stuff and take advantage of the power. This is beautiful. There's so much I want to play with queries, change Snowflake to do whatever I wanted to do, talk to my users inside my account and tell them, hey, you're trying this. You should try this, either with this table or this pattern, uh, just by using these constructs. Yeah, that's the goal. Thanks so much for this demo. I'm super excited. I can't wait to try it. Uh, for people that want to try it too, what should they do next? Yeah, so they can, for Ops Center, they can go to the Snowflake Marketplace. They just hit Get, and they can have that installed immediately in their account and start playing with that. And for the Sundeck SaaS product, you can actually go to our website, one click, sign up, free to try. So play with the native app, uh, go for the free trial, and for the rest of our conversation, people should go and check the video on the link below. Thank <laughs> you.